Hello everyone. In this OpenTTD logic video, we have a new monostable circuit slash edge detector design. And that is these yellow circuits on the left here. I built three of them. And I've used them to create a train counter. So as we can see, currently it's counted up to uh, 79 trains and now it just went up to 80. And if we speed it up, we can see how each of the digits counts based on the previous digit. So, what is an edge detector? So let's take a look at the first one in this chain. So we have our input on the right, which is an exit signal, and our two outputs on the top, two combo signals. So the input changes from red to green, and when it changes, that's called an edge. So the edge detector, in this case, will detect when the input changes from red to green. And when that happens, it'll release a brief green output, which will allow the counter train to move. This is also called a monostable circuit because the output is only stable in the red state. So the output will always stay red and it'll only be green for a brief moment before falling back to red. So it's only stable in the red state. So because of the edge detector, this is a very robust way to count trains. Even if the trains in the input jam up, it'll still only move the counter train once. And that's because the edge will still only happen once when the signal turns from red to green. This is unlike if we were just to use a NOT gate. If a jam happened in the input of a NOT gate, the counter train would just be let free and would count multiple trains. So to build one of these, we'll just take our input off of the main line and then build a diagonal oblong loop like this. Then on the long edge, in the middle of each of the long edges, we'll place an entry signal facing towards the input, and on the other side, an exit signal. And then on the two straight sections directly behind those two signals, we'll place normal signals, normal block signals. Now for the output, we want to detect if there are any trains that are in this right side of the loop. So we can do that over here. And since we have the exit signal already, we can just get an input like or an output like that. Or if we want an output from over here, we can also do that. We just have to make sure that the exit signal faces both ways. Now all we need for the logic trains are two half tile long trains. Ideally the fastest you have. And we can see as the input turns from red to green. The output briefly flashes green. I've slowed down the two logic trains so we can see how this actually works. So when the input is green, the two trains rotate on opposite sides of the loop, so one of them is always in the red area. However, once the input turns red, the two trains are stopped by the entry signal. Then once the input turns green, both trains will be released at the same time and they'll be lopsided and they'll both end up in the gray area so the output will briefly flash green. Then after a little while, the entry signal will even out the trains and they will stay on opposite sides again. So although this is a new circuit that I only recently discovered, it's already proved to be really useful. Um, it's useful for keeping state based off of the number of trains that have passed, so that's definitely useful for train splitters and of course train counters. And over here I have a fancier train counter which has a seven segment display and we can see it count upwards, two, three, four, and so on. And this also works based off of a edge detector over here. And then it keeps state, it keeps basically ten different outputs, and then there's this big decoder to determine which of the seven segments needed need to be displayed for each of these 10 outputs. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for videos, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you next time.